A St. Louis patrol car drove right into the side of a gay bar late Sunday night. But the police proceeded to arrest the owner of that bar over an alleged altercation they have absolutely no proof of. So let's get to the details of what allegedly happened. So Chad Morris and James Pence, the married couple who co-own the gay bar in question, Bar PM, and live above it said that they came downstairs after they heard this loud crash at 1230 in the morning. So it was Monday morning, late Sunday night, depending on how you like to look at it. And so James Pence told the press, quote, I was I was actually already in bed and I heard a loud boom. I jumped up thinking it was an accident with a vehicle and then I saw it and it was a St. Louis City Police Department vehicle in the front of our building. So we do have some security camera footage of the crash. Let's take a quick look at that. All right, so you can see it, you see the car, I mean, obviously driving incredibly quickly and there you see it crash into a building. And so that is the surveillance showing you the crash as it happened. Now after that, the incident report says that an offender came outside and began shouting obscenities at police officers after the crash. But it does not name the offender. In a video taken by a witness, one of the responding officers asks Pence for proof of ID. Show me your ID. At that point, Pence responds to the police officer saying, quote, you're not IDing me, Pence says in the video. I've done nothing wrong. Shortly after, he yells that the officers cannot card him. The officer tells Pence not to yell, later adding, quote, you're not going to cause a disturbance, to which Pence responds, I'm not causing a disturbance. And then Pence was handcuffed. He was handcuffed after that. So the incident report states that when one of the officers attempted to calm the situation, Chad Morris shoved John Peer, John Pence, uh, one of the, I'm sorry, John Pierce, who was one of the cops on the scene. The officer accused Morris of striking him hard in the chest with an open hand, causing the officer to lose his balance, according to the probable cause statement. He also claimed that Morris attempted to flee toward the alleyway near the bar. A 22 minute witness video though, does not show Morris making any physical contact with any officer before entering the alleyway near the bar. Also, what happened in the alleyway itself wasn't visible in the video, so there's some stuff we don't see. But when Morris walks back through the gate of the alleyway, he is in handcuffs with an injury. He has an injury in his eye and ripped clothing. So Morris was arrested for allegedly assaulting an officer and resisting arrest and jailed for about 30 hours before being released. Now the charge was later downgraded from a felony to a misdemeanor. But Morris's lawyer is saying that he never struck any officer, but rather an officer who was wearing a beanie hat was actually the one who beat him. So he also released a photo, a photo of him taken on Tuesday shows that his left eye is bruised and swollen. Okay, so the story gets crazier if you can believe it. As for why the cops ran into the building in the first place, they have changed their story multiple times. So for instance, according to local reporting, initially the officer at the scene told Pence that Morris and Morris, so the two co-owners of the bar and the couple, that he'd been avoiding a dog in the middle of the street. Then the dog turned into a parked car that the officer said he had to swerve to avoid. And so I guess he allegedly swerves into the building to avoid the car. The incident report though from the St. Louis Police Department says an officer was driving too close to a parked car and then overcorrected and lost control of the vehicle. Okay, so which one is it? But then, but then, at a briefing yesterday, Lieutenant Colonel Rene Kreisman said that the officer driving the cruiser admits to getting distracted while attempting to change his in car radio. So, yet again, yet again, the story changes. And final thing, Jenk. So footage captures the same patrol car also running a red light just moments before it crashes. So that's what we're looking at as we speak. There it is running the red light showing erratic driving, showing that 
look, there could be a possibility that the police officer was under the influence. The problem is we won't know because the officers involved were not given a toxicology test. Now the mayor of St. Louis says the incident is under investigation. And James Pence reflected on what happened saying the following. I feel like the situation has been handled horribly all the way around. All they needed to do was take responsibility, admit they had an accident and handle it differently. Cenk. Yeah, so uh, when they first crashed into the gay bar, I thought you could have knocked. Um, but then it got crazier and crazier. Uh, so uh, they said, "Oh, we arrested him for causing a disturbance. Already I know the entire thing is BS at that point. Because uh, after resisting arrest, causing a disturbance is the second biggest BS charge the cops use when they want to assault someone and pretend that they were the ones that started it, okay? Then you look at the video and they're like, "Oh, the guy pushed me, shoved me in the chest. I lost my balance, okay? I thought, oh, so you were drunk uh, and there's no way that he actually pushed you. You look at the videotape, no one pushes him. Uh, so I don't know if he was drunk. That's usually how drunk people drive, okay? And, and when someone asks you, comes out innocently, the owner, I mean, cops are supposed to protect property, right? That's like their number one job is in this capitalist structure, right? And the owner comes out and goes, hey, what happened? And all of a sudden you get super defensive. Okay, I mean, these all telltale signs of the cops totally lying and totally saying things to cover up for the original problems that they caused. But then my the kicker though, the best one was the one that Anna mentioned about why he did the swerving in the first place. Oh, A dog came out and I was trying to protect it. You saw the right. tape, there's no dog. I mean, you have to remember until smartphones and all that technology came out fairly recently that we started seeing the cops lies with our own eyes. For my whole life when I grew up in America, the media always said that the cops were always telling the truth. And when cops went to testify, it was like, oh, that's all the cop is saying it. Defendant, we never believe the defendant, but if the cop is saying it, then it must be true. Look, I, I, to the point where, look, I think OJ did it, right? But I now understand why the jury acquitted him uh, way better than I did back then. Because in their experience, the cops lie all the time. You can't trust anything a cop says. And so is that true for all cops? Of course not, right? But a lot of them. So many of them that when I see certain words in a in a report, I know which direction it's gonna go. I know the lies that they make up and I can tell you ahead of time what they're gonna say and what's gonna be true and untrue. So of course there was no dog and there's and they those guys didn't go out and randomly assault the cops. They were just trying to cover their tracks. So it's totally outrageous. And I love that we now have cameras that could show us what the reality is and catch these cops who apparently have been lying for, well, as long as there's been cops. If you enjoyed this video, that's because of our members. They make us independent, they make us strong, and they make us honest. Become a member today by hitting the join button below.